Hey everybody, this week's r is brought to you by the Ultimate Game Night Bag. And folks, there are only a few more hours left to back this on Kickstarter if you were ever interested. Uh, the bag has done really, really well. It's uh, raised over 100000 which is very exciting because it means it's hit both of its big stretch goals. Um, the original uh, options for it were Black, Blue, and Heather. Personally, I, I really like the Heather, even though what I demonstrated in last week's R&R was the black bag. But, uh, folks, they have unlocked charcoal gray and purple. And Jen, I know she would love to get her hands on that purple bag. Now, the bag itself is absolutely phenomenal. Um, there'll be a link for it down in the show notes if you would like to check out the Kickstarter page or the video I did for it uh, where I put it through its paces, showed how tough it is, how many pockets it has. It's very smart design and uh, it's incredible sturdy design as well. Heck, if you scroll down here, I mean, I, I really, man, they did a better job showing off how to use these pockets than I did, I have to admit. So many great features for it. Um, and again, tough as nails. They put this thing through its paces with a forklift and it survived. It's a great, great bag for folks who are looking for their ultimate game night bag. And like I said, folks, you've got a few hours left to back. Links down in the show notes. And now, uh, let's see what the gang is up to. And hello, friends. So welcome to the r and Show, episode 88. My name's Ruel, hanging out, as always, with a Chris and Ray. Chris and Ray, hello, friends. How are you? Doing woo. good. Woo! I, I, give, I give it a resounding woo out woo, of woo. 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 That's what today is. All right. Uh, you, know, you know what I do give, give today? I give it this expression, which was my expression when I saw the purple, because I was like, ooh, purple. Ooh, ooh, lovely purple. color. Yeah. <laughs> I want that one. I I, I do like those uh, new Jen. colors. Yeah, I'm with Jen. Yeah, they look yeah. really nice. Uh, it's it's really, really, really nice. nice. So thank you to Mayday again for sponsoring this episode, uh, folks. We got a really fun episode uh, this time. This is something we talked a little bit about uh, during the pre-show. If you want to check out that, there'll be links uh, below where you can see the extended edition where we do a pre-show and a post-show. Uh, but during the pre-show, we talked about or shared about how this isn't a list that we've all not all of us have done this before me personally i've never done something like this where we talk about games that we should hate but actually love so um ray chris how did you go about uh, searching for games for this list Ray, um sure so i went about this with primarily like genres and types of games that i typically don't gravitate towards so like games that break the rules i think is how richard described it um mm -hmm. in like his little pre- uh, in this little trailer for the show. Uh, that's how I went about this. I will say that I um, I saw a sneak peek of everyone else's picks for this. And I feel like I, with the track record that I've set on the show, people are going to expect me to bring out like weird, wacky, obscure games. But the problem is I like those. So mine mm. are going to actually be mm. extremely norm core <laughs> picks that go against my typical preferences for games. So I did, I, I hate to disappoint. There are no like deep cut abstract weird games. I thought about that initially. I thought about like games that, you know, have terrible BGG ratings that I love, but that's a different, that's a different list because I like the weird little, like the weird little yep. terrible, like quote unquote, terrible games that don't sound like their games. Um, so yeah, a lot of mine are just norm core picks that everyone else loves and that I also love, but I own not a whole else like it. So uh, I did the list that Ray said she wasn't going to do. Yeah. <laughs> that's why when I saw your list, I was like, oh man, yeah. but then I, it wouldn't have been disingenuous because that's a, that's a type of game that I really I think like. You're, I think you're right. I think I am a complete dirty liar, uh, because oh. I, I like these games and I probably like would always like these games. I think you're right. I think nice. I should like I these games. To, I, think, I didn't mean to discredit I, I think, your list. No, <laughs> I think I should like these games, and I think everybody should like these games because objectively they are the best games. I'm so oh, excited! There it is. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Um, yeah. yeah, I went more in guilty pleasures, right? Into that mm. that sort of like guilty pleasure vibe, which we were originally pitching as a title. I yeah. think the mm -hmm. change of title does actually change the calculation, and I decided yeah. to ignore that and continue with the original. <laughs> yeah, love that. <laughs> nice, love that. Yeah, I was uh, pretty much the same way I, I as, as Ray. Just things that I didn't think I would like. They're like just totally different from what I normally play. And that's what I went with. Uh, but why don't we kick things off with number 12 and Chris, I, I can't wait to talk about this one. Go right oh, ahead. Yeah. My friend. Well, you can, you, you can play that. You can play the video right away because what the video is, it's an hour long video, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, Cause I sent in that, that link. 
Uh, and all this video is is that it'll set the scene for what this game is, and that of course is atmosphere. Oh, atmosphere. Atmosphere. This this might be Look. nightmare. Oh, is it stop be, motion? Is the whole, is it an hour long stop motion video? <laughs> no, I thought it was a different video. I thought it was a different video. I was um. Yeah, this is the video I, I, I got really wish, Can you imagine? I really, I really what a wish nightmare? that it was. That it was different. Uh, um, yeah, so nightmare. so nightmare or atmosphere um, or atmosphere. The harbingers. Uh, there's there is um, if you if you Google VHS atmosphere full VHS, you can get a sense of like the gatekeeper uh, and, mm. and and go through you or, or search it on YouTube. It's it's this game. It's a VHS board game, and I mean. I, I do I am not adhering to this list because there is there is no world in which I wouldn't like a VHS board game experience except there is because like I'm I'm very mechanics driven and like objectively it's not a good game like it it, it isn't uh, it's like a very bad game because it's roll and move uh, and then you are stopped periodically by this gatekeeper who we were seeing on the screen it's who goes stop <laughs> whose turn is it next hands up. And you say you have to put your hands up. And if you don't put your hands up, sometimes it'll be like, if you didn't put your hands up, lose your turn. And you're like, oh, dang it. <laughs> um, and so it'll be like, now who is that? Whose turn is it? Have you been good? <laughs> Have you? Answer me, <laughs> mortal. And it's like, it's. I would just watch this as a video. I wouldn't even need to play the game. And it's mostly it's silence because there's just like spooky music in between. And then he'll pop up unexpectedly. But like when he, when that gatekeeper pops up, oh, baby. Uh, it's so baby. good. Uh, I had this game as a kid and I played it like, uh, I always played it on like my birthday. And it was just such a like funny experience. I still own it. And I like, I don't, I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, I should go. Yeah, I should go grab the grab the box. <gasps> I think I still own it. At least I hope oh I certainly do. I, I definitely still own the um the also the Klingon board game. There's Star Trek the VCR interactive board game at Klingon's Challenge. Oh That's gosh. the BGG <laughs> listing. Uh, if you, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Uh, Gowron is um, from Star Trek. Well, he's not Gowron. He's a different name, but it's played by the same actor who plays Gowron, who's always saying, for glory! Um, he, you, you're, he's like kidnapped the Star Trek sh fleet ship. And there's like a whole 10 minute introduction where he's like, oh, you little baby ensigns, I've kidnapped the ship. I'm going to fly into Klingon war space and like get blast them up and start a war between the Klingons and the Federation. And you've only got an hour to like break out of the cell and the brig and like stop them and get access to the bridge and stop them. Um, so well, they're just like, they're pure experiences, right? Mm. Yeah. I think that face says it all. That, I, that that's, is, the gatekeeper is my this, my yeah. sleep paralysis the, demon. The he just pops oh. up suddenly. He's like, <laughs> he my pops up, of the and, and also in, in atmosphere. So nightmare came first. Well, it was called it was called atmosphere or nightmare, depending where you were. And then right. there was like atmosphere, the harbingers. Uh, and so and in that one, he's like even more moldy. You know, I'm sorry. Does uh, this does this roll for crit video have a Rick roll in it? Is that what you just like? Was that what scrubbed was? over? Yeah, know. probably. I think there's a Rick roll in there somewhere. Oh my gosh! Maybe at the end. Um, but Chris, I am so jealous. It's so good. Maybe I just and, hallucinated a Rickroll. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm so there. jealous that you own it. I yeah. I tried so badly to find a copy of the a playable copy of this for yeah. a Halloween stream back on oh, yeah. the CGE channel, and they go for like hundreds of dollars now. So if you yeah. if we can ever find like a DVD player, I would I would I would well, die. No, it's on I would the whole thing is on YouTube. The hour, oh, the hour is on YouTube. Can like, we play at a uploaded. con? I would give 100%. anything. Anything yeah, yeah, to like yeah. rent out a room at a con and yeah. get all dark and spooky. That's I've great. always wanted to play this. I oh my it's god! So you roll, you try to collect keys, and then you have to go to the middle. So you got to go back to where you started because uh, everybody starts in a random spot. And generally, mm -hmm. you'll be like, you'll you'll get the roll asymmetric rolls. Come on now, um, <laughs> oh. you, uh, and you might become. You have ten minutes to become a roll, and if you don't, you become a soul ranger who basically is impossible to win the game. But you just run around and chase people <laughs> as skulls. But you don't get any access. That sounds awesome. Awesome. It's just it's completely that awful. Sounds... Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, and so and then you got to get back to the to the start, and then you reach into this little bucket where everybody's written down their deepest darkest fears, and if you don't pull out your fear, you've conquered fear, and uh, you win the game. Like you have to get all six keys and get back wow. to the start. Um, wow. I, I yeah. would give anything. Yeah, fantastic. 
I would totally but it's do only this. Yeah. it's only number it's it's at the bottom of our list because my other two are even better. So I could talk oh, about this for wait. hours, but great. I got it. We got to move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, great choice for number twelve to kick things off. Uh, the games that we thought we'd uh, hate, but we actually love. So number twelve is atmosphere. Number eleven is is to me. Uh, this game, I had I sort of was sort of curious about it growing up, but I never got a chance to play it, and it's only within the last 10 years that I learned how to play it. It's a game that's been around for 3,000 years or so called Backgammon. Uh, this is an mm. abstract game. I had no idea what I was in for when I just uh, learned how to play it. The only reason I wanted to play it, folks, I'm going to be totally honest, um, I used to play poker. And at poker night, there would be hands where I wouldn't play. I'd just fold my cards. And then on the side, me and the other players who weren't in the hand were like, what are we going to do? We're just sitting there talking. Let's learn how to play backgammon. We can gamble Aww. on backgammon instead. And yeah, so that's how I got into it. I went on to, I, I don't know if I watched, no, I didn't watch a YouTube video. This is actually relatively new. I went and downloaded a program called New Backgammon, G-N-U, and it was like a backgammon tutorial program. And I learned it and it turned out, I loved it. This is an abstract game. It's a race. You're trying to race all your checkers off the board. There are certain ways that you move on the board. Um, when there's two or more checkers on one space, that space is considered locked and you cannot um, land on that as an opponent. You have to go over that. And um, if you land on a single checker, you're going to punch your opponent. Well, not punch, but uh, your opponent goes onto the off the board you just... and you have to roll a certain number to get back on it. Uh, so it's it's a race game. It's got dice. It's got luck. Um, but there's a bunch of math involved in it, and that's why I'm not a great backgammon player because the whole math thing sort of escapes me. But mm. it's so much fun. Um, you play it usually in like a best two out of three or whatever, and um, I I turn out to be a big fan. I play it all the time now on BGA, and um, I'm always looking for a backgammon uh, buddy. So if you play backgammon, folks, hit me up because I would love to play. And that's why it's our number 11, games that I thought I would hate because I had no idea what it was, but I turned out to love backgammon. Nice. I love how backgammon comes in a little suitcase. I think yeah. you got to bring that back. Yeah. That's my favorite part of backgammon is a little suitcase. Isn't that, that cool? In. Yeah. And I have mine, Ray. I still have. I bought my set from Toys R Us many years ago for yeah. like eight bucks or something. And I still have. Nice. That's the only set I have. I would love to get one of those like, you know, uh, heirloom. Pre it's just a beautiful. Yeah. Piece, but... Yeah. We had one of those passed down in, in my family. I don't I don't oh. play it enough. Oh, this you know, do you play it? Do you know how to play or? I know how to play. I just ha I haven't played back in in years. Oh, what about you, Chris? Was back in a thing? I, I've played back in. I played it in university. I, I had a, a oh, friend okay. who, who really enjoyed it and she taught me. Uh, and yeah, it was like pretty solid. I was nice. like, yeah, this isn't too, this isn't too bad. Yeah, it, it's a it's a terrific uh, abstract game. So that's our number eleven, folks. Backgammon. Let's move on to number ten. And Ray, mm. let's talk about number ten. My number ten. All right. Uh, my entry for this list is Shake That City, uh, which is an AEG game that came out like a year or two ago. Um, and this is on my list because I typically don't like gimmicky games and at first mm. i saw this mm. and i was like this looks like a gimmick <laughs> this looks silly um the art style really isn't uh isn't my jam it's like that very minimalist kind of like i don't know th this nothing about this game appealed to me uh and then you can actually go back and see the moment the the moment that this game won me over is actually recorded on twitch i used to do these streams uh for cge where i would walk around the convention hall, li literally live streaming like nine hours a day, me walking around like doing Gen Con. I was just live on Twitch for that period of time. Uh, and I would sit down and I would do demos live of games. And I, I sit down to play Shake That City because they had a chair and I was tired. And that was the only reason I sat down. I was like, please let me sit in this chair and, <laughs> and then talk to me, please. Um, so I did that and they had me shake the, that, little, that little yellow box and press a little button and then it pooped out a perfect three by three uh, cube cube grid, like a grid of cubes that was perfect three by three. And I was like, oh my God, I, I have to know everything about this game now because that is just a really cool little piece of engineering. And basically once I actually started to play this game, I realized that it's really, I wouldn't classify it as a gimmick because uh, I'll explain the mechanics in a second, but like that ability to randomize a three by three grid like that there's not a really another clean, efficient way to do that without this cool little contraption that they made. Like maybe you could do it with cards and stuff, but it'd be clunky and annoying. Like this is actually a gimmick that I find really uh, fits the game. And so just quickly put the mechanics of the game 
and you shake up this little box that has cubes in it. Again, you poop out that little three by three <laughs> grid. And then you have a starting player who picks one of those colors. And so say in that example, you just saw maybe it was red and there were two, two red cubes on top of each other. You, that person then places the red buildings on their own personal little city plot in the exact orientation that they show up in that three by three grid. Um, regardless of where you are at the table, you're always going to place them down exactly as the orientation as they show up on that little, um, as they as they get pooped out. You're going to put them on your board in the exact same orientation. So the main player is going to pick a color and then everyone else can pick any of the other colors. And it's basically just a really clever little spatial um, tile placement game where you're trying to fit all your buildings onto your little city plot while trying to hit various scoring objectives, like trying to have, you know, uh, roads connecting to the outside of the city and stuff like that. Um, but man, that that little mechanism is so it's so clever and it's so cool. And it really, really won me over despite just personal preference. The appearance of this game doesn't really do much for me, um, but I was really, really won over by it. And so that's uh, Shake That City. Yeah, this is oh, I love this game. I'm so glad it made the list. And I love the how you're describing the the box thingy pooping out of the cubes because it literally is. It's you know, you shake yeah, it up. It's, it's and just, so satisfying. It really is right it's so nice and i can see how that would be sort of like oh it's a gimmick whatever but it really is uh, integral to gameplay and it does a really great job of uh you know making uh the gameplay streamline and yeah because i I couldn't imagine not doing it without the the cube pooper thingy you know anything else i feel would be way more cumbersome and they also managed to make it out of chipboard too so it's 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 still a very like reasonable price point they didn't make it like you could obviously over engineer that, but they they kept it like very low price point, but it still yeah. functions really well. I've been using mine since I got it. Mm-hmm. I play this game pretty regularly, and it's never never broken on me or anything like that. So nice, yeah, that's great. I I really just wanted the super cut. Uh, right after Ray says, you know, I don't really like gimmicky games. Hard cut to every like obscure <laughs> pick that Ray has said. I was I... like, didn't you just say that this, this whole this whole list was gonna be not that? Like, I'm not that huge on gimmicky <laughs> games. Oh, you get okay. to drop stuff. Oh, yum yum island, you throw. All right, it on the all right, ground. all right. You zip it, zip it. Let me, let me explain. Let it. me explain. I like gimmicky party games. I don't like. When, st- when you take a strat- a mediocre <laughs> strategy game and then you add a gimmick, that's what I mean. That's uh, but fair. I do appreciate the call out because boy, I, I do love a gimmick. I do, but that's my that's what I mean is I, I find that there's, a, especially on Kickstarter and stuff, you want that like flashy yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 you need something. And yeah, I find totally. that there's a trend of strategy games that are kind of meh, that get yeah. a gimmick attached onto them. And then I'm like, all right. Yeah. This is what I thought this was, right. right? It's not a party game. It's a strategy game yeah. with what I thought was a gimmick, but turned out to be like a really cool integral mechanism to how the game functions. Right. And that's right. won me over. But yep. you mean, I, yes, that's I do like my, <laughs> my paper <laughs> blindfolds and Yum Yum Island and all that jazz. Uh, correct. It's solid so call out. <laughs> great call out. Um, let's see what Richard thinks of all this uh, and our shenanigans. Oh Richard, take it away with our number nine. Okay, okay. This is a uh, fun topic, trying to turn something negative into something positive. I love it. Although, Chris, I've heard of Atmosphere, but I don't know anything about it. So I'll just uh, look forward to seeing what you have to say. <laughs> well, backgammon, uh, I think I, I can't quite join you on that one. I did try playing it once many, many years ago and could not find it very engaging at all. But someday, man, you've got to get yourself to Greece because backgammon is practically the national pastime there. Uh, um, everybody grows up playing it. Every family has their heirloom uh, board. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been around as long as it has. There must be something good to it. And I look forward to hearing you explain why you love it. And uh, Ray, shake that city. Why should you hate this? This is a wonderful game. Everybody should enjoy it. That one really confused me. What could you possibly not like about this game? I am now more intrigued than ever to see the full show once uh, the live stream goes up. But anyway, folks, uh, let me tell you about number nine on our list. There's... There's a few things that I just can't stand in uh, board gaming. Uh, you know, mechanisms predominantly. And one of them is pick up and deliver. Now, many, many years ago, I did a top 10 pick up and deliver games with uh, Tom Vassell of uh, the Dice Tower and, uh, and Jason Levine as well. And honestly, I had a hard time even coming up with that list. And some people would say that I did, I cheated and didn't even put pick up and deliver games on it. But our combined number nine is a relatively new uh, pick up and deliver game that I have fallen in love with. 
Comet. just came out last year. It is about um, playing cards to uh, hatch prehistoric animals on the board and then spending those same cards. It's a multi-use card game where uh, we either hatch the animals that need saving or we sacrifice the animals, uh, you know, d discard the cards because they also have movement points on it. And we use them to move the uh, animals closer and closer to safety. There is a sanctuary uh, because the comet is coming. Everybody's going to get wiped out. We're trying to save as many animals as possible. And uh, yeah, there. I don't think anybody could call this anything other than pick up and deliver. Uh, it is all about, uh, you know, you pick up, i.e., put these things on the board, and then slowly, very slowly, move them across the board. And that's everything I hate about pick up and deliver. Most of the time when I like a pick up and deliver game, it's because it's really fast and snappy. And yeah, okay, I'm picking something up, but then effectively I teleport where I need to go, or um, something like that. This game, it takes a while, although it's got some really fun elements. You know, the fact that, I mean, there's there's a, a healthy dose of checkers in this game because players can hopscotch over each other if you can get into the right position at the right time. But the thing that really makes it special is once you have successfully delivered an animal to safety, you keep that card and unlock the special ability on that card that's going to help you rescue more animals later on. And so the game has a really wonderful growth curve as we get more and more powerful the more and more animals we save as time is ticking and running down to when the inevitable comet will come and wipe out anything we couldn't save. Yeah, I generally can't stand pick up and deliver because it's just so ho-hum boring and my wife is pretty much the same. And yet, she gave this a rare 5 out of 5 stars on her Gen Jog show, which means this might be in her top 10 games of the year, quite frankly, which is really saying something. And I think it's really great too. Um, one of those rarities, a game I should hate, pick up and deliver, and yet I love, number 9 is Comet. Wow, I never would have thought I'd see a game like Comet on Richard's list. I know he he and Jen are not pick up and deliver fans. I am. I enjoy pick up and delivery games, but uh, this one looks cool. I, I like the fact that it has that like he called it checkers, where you can like sort of hopscotch over players. That's always fun and interesting. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's a really good choice for a game that he thinks he would hate but actually love. So thank you, Richard. Yeah. Uh, that's um, any uh, any thoughts on that before we move on, friends? No thoughts at all. I want to talk about me. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're here to do. <laughs> Let's move on to our next game. Uh, Chris, you've got a good one for us, my friend. Well, let's, I do uh, have a good one. It's not It's not this this beautiful <laughs> oh! VCR, the board game. Wow. It's not that as I pass it through the frame. Nice. It's not, and honestly, I don't own a copy of it, so I wish this could be a beautiful reveal of, of what it is. It's oh. not Atmosphere, the Harbingers, wow. the um, Harbingers, which is the better version of Atmosphere. <laughs> Um, no, this is a game that brings me an incredible amount of joy. My friend Montana and university had a copy and this is an older game also from 1991 atmosphere nightmare, both from 1991. Well, at nightmare, the original one is from 91. Um, this one is a game called, uh, electronic dream phone, uh, <laughs> oh. also known as dream phone. Yes. The premise, phone. the premise of dream phone is that there is a boy who has a crush on every person who's playing this game. Um, you can see in the, oh, dang it, they didn't get that. They didn't get it. They're looking for their love um, in, in this commercial that's passing by our screen. It's brings me so, like, if you think about this theme, there is one boy who has a crush on everyone. <laughs> and the point of the game is to find out who this boy is, because if you can find out who that boy is first, you get to be with that boy. Um, and and just that as a concept. And so it's like a clue thing. You go through and you're like, hey, d hey, um, I'm going to call, call my boy's friend uh, who tells me all the secrets. Hey, do you, do you, does he like baseball? No, or yeah, no, he doesn't like baseball. Okay, cool. So you cross out the boys who like baseball and you're just trying to whittle down all the boys so you, you can find eventually who that hunky man is who definitely has a crush on just you and will create a very meaningful relationship with you and not because they've got a crush on everyone and are forcing <laughs> everyone to fight for their for his affections in this weird sadistic cage match uh comes with this beautiful <laughs> pink phone you get to you get to punch in the numbers and call people and it'll be like he likes he likes most movies or he likes most food 
but not pizza. And you're like, okay, and now I know that he doesn't like pizza. And you're like trying to whittle this down. You can be like, speakerphone, tell everybody around the table what he likes. So it's kind of just like a clue style game. Yeah. I, I do love that this is this is just clues, but for yeah. girls. It's, yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful representation of its time and <laughs> uh, and how we should market to to young to the young women of tomorrow. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just horrendous. Like it's horrendous when you think of it, but it's so so funny when you actually think about the theme. It's like cuz cuz the theme is like you're going to find the boy who's got a crush on you. But like for mechanically, there can only be one boy. So it's not like there's everyone's like racing to find their own special person, right? And having like a long lasting. No, it's this piece of garbage who's <laughs> who's like, I can't wait. It's this, it's this um something boy, you know, to keep it in polite conversation, who's called who's ringing up everyone, being like, Who wants to go on a date with me now? And we're just falling into his lap for some reason. Oh, just Blaze being Blaze and and just being being pulled into his his ineffable lure. Um, but it's just it's so it's so funny to me. It's so funny. And if somebody was like, "Hey, do you want to play Dream Phone?" Like a resounding yes, a hundred percent. Absolutely, like it's not, right now. It's not. It's not a good game. No way. No way is it a good game in any sense of it. But is it an amazing game? Yes. It's not 100%. good. It's amazing. Such so, a perfect right. encapsulation of what it's like to be uh, a girl. In fact, yeah. in case you didn't yeah. know, um, yeah. I'm here to, to confirm. <laughs> you can that confirm that's, it. That's girlhood right there. Let perfect. me tell you. <laughs> well, that's what I like about it too. Yeah, it really helps me like re really see. Yeah, uh, it helps see, you connect. See the, <laughs> the other, you know, the the, the, the female experience, which yeah. is what I'm, I'm interested 100%. in generally. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait hilarious. to hear what Richard says about this. <laughs> no, me neither. I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> it's just fantastic, yeah, it's and I had to make a list. Uh, and like, I was so like, oh, we played it in university, and man, we had a freaking amazing time. <laughs> oh, I bet there. you did. I'm and a I hope, blast. I hope Montana. I hope you still have a copy. In fact, I'm going to text her right now and we'll see if she replies while this stream is going on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's all about that uh, pink phone uh, for me. Well, what a component. That is, that is brilliant. Uh, great choice, Chris. Number eight, electronic dream phone. Let's move on to our number seven. That's going to be on me. Uh, this is a game. Now, I the first word in the title of this game, I saw the word and I was like, I immediately, nope, I'm not going to like this game. But then the next two words showed up. I was like, okay, now I've got to give it a shot because uh, number seven, it is Risk Star Wars. So Risk, not a not a fan. I mean, I played it before, but it just wasn't my jam. But y'all know I love Star Wars, so I of course I had to try it. And surprisingly, I actually love this game. Um, from what I hear, friends that have uh, the Queen's Gambit, which is one of my Grail games, I'd love to mm -hmm. own it someday, they say it's a really streamlined version of that, and um, that's what got me hooked. And I end up buying a copy of it, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, you're basically battling on three fronts. You have the Death Star in the middle. You're trying to blow that up. But just like in Return of the Jedi, which this movie, this game is based on, you have to blow up the uh, the shield generator down on Endor. So you got to go through stormtroopers. And then on the other side, you have a third front you're battling. Luke Skywalker versus his dad. Uh, spoiler alert, his dad, uh, Darth Vader. Can he bring him over to whoa, the dark whoa, side? Whoa, whoa, Yeah, wow. sorry, Ray. I shouldn't have said anything. Spoiler alert. Yeah. That, was, that was not a quick enough whoa. spoiler. Yeah, right I'm everyone. sorry. I spoiled the oh, ending. Oh, no. Or the big secret of a 40-year-old movie. My bad, folks. Um, so... And so you have three different fronts, and it's really cool because um, you have to, you have to, it's a balancing act. As the rebellion or you know, the rebels, can you get to the shield generator, take down the shield, and at the same time get the Millennium Falcon into the Death Star to blow it up? And you've got a ton of TIE fighters uh, going at you. And at the same time, third thing going on. Luke versus uh, Darth Vader. If Darth Vader manages to bring Luke to the uh, to the dark side, then you're going to lose cards. You're going to do all mm. these you know things that make it tougher for you to win the game. And I love it. Now, having said that, it is skewed towards the rebel side because hey, again, spoiler alert number two: the rebels win at the end. Oh. Ray, sorry, um, might but, as well but not want it now. Yeah, you <laughs> might as well just yeah forget it. It's it's garbage. But anyways, it's it's still dice rolling, but it has some hand management which I like. Uh, you do have some decisions to make. It's not just you know standard risk and it's thematically really interesting to me it's return of the jedi the board game and that's why it's our number seven risk star wars 
Nice. That's pretty good. That's a good pick. I, I haven't played this one. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different like risk offshoots that are still like surprisingly good and different from risk, and they get a yep. bad name, like a bad name, quote unquote, because everybody's had like those day long experiences of risk and are like, yep. I'm never playing anything risk again. Yep. But like mm -hmm. that, Queen's Gambit and uh, 2040 AD as well. It's like it only mm -hmm. takes takes like five turns to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and that's one thing I. Really nice, I'm uh, glad you pointed that out, Chris, because um, I totally forgot to mention that. Yeah, Risk usually takes hours and hours, if not days and days, to play. <clears> whereas <throat> Risk Star Wars, it, you knock it out in like 60 minutes or so, even shorter than the movie I just spoiled from 40 years ago. So it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. A terrific, yeah. Uh, terrific. There game. you go. Okay, I look. can. <laughs> I just want to drop a little a little secret. We may have if you like uh, risk oh. games that take a spin on the concept of risk. I don't Ooh. know. We might have something sometime right. in the future. All right. From the, check out the op. Check yeah. the, yeah, the, folks. the op website every day. Yes. Until you find out. Yes. <laughs> we're refreshing constantly. <laughs> Make nice. it your homepage. <laughs> I cannot wait. Uh, let's move on to number six. So Ray, you've got our next That's game me. for us. My next one, um, I'm going to try to not talk about this one for a long time because it has... Uh, Conveniently been brought up in the last couple of streams, but my number six is Decorum. Mm. Um, and I know that the new expansion was a sponsor for last mm. stream. So I talked a little bit briefly at the start of last at last uh, R&R show about how much I love this game. But it, this is on this list because I hate co-ops. Pretty mm -hmm. much blanketly, there I'm very, very picky when it comes to co-ops. Um, and I also don't really like deduction games a whole lot. I When it's just purely who can figure the thing out first. It, if for some reason, mechanically, I don't love it, but when it's put together the way the co-op and the deduction is put together in decorum, the way those two mechanics kiss in this game, I don't know, it, it tickles my brain in such a unique and fun way that it is one of the very few co-op games that I own in my collection. So very briefly, Decorum, it's, uh, what is it? It's a passive aggressive game of cohabitation. Um, I typically play this at two players. That tends to be where I like it the most. I've had some luck with three players, but I typically like to play this with my partner because it's kind of funny and ironic to be passively aggressively fighting over your house with your actual real life partner. And basically you each have secret win conditions. You want maybe, for example, to um, have one painting of every color and the other person uh, wants all the blue paintings upstairs or whatever. You have a handful of those requirements and on your turn, you can add an item to the house, you can remove an item from the house or you can swap something. And all you're allowed to say when the other person does something is, uh, I love that. I feel eh about that or I absolutely despise that. And if you get kind of fun and into the like passive aggression and you 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 flower your language a little bit more, it can be kind of a fun, almost pseudo role-playing game because all the scenarios give you like a little bit of backstory about who these people are. I really like role-playing games. So I will insert that into any game where you give me the chance to. Uh, but yeah, no, I just really love the way this collaborative deduction works. Again, typically deduction, don't like it. Cooperation with other people, God forbid. Nothing I hate more. Um, <laughs> the way that they work in this game, it just really clicks for me. So this is a game, if you just saw on paper my preferences as a gamer, you wouldn't expect to work for me, but I actually really, really love it. Yeah, nice. great, great that, choice. That vocalizing, I didn't, when we talked about it previously, I didn't realize <laughs> the only things you could say were, I hate that. And I mean, come on, as, I yeah. already knew I was going to enjoy this game and I, now I need to go out. And yeah, it. you can really only, and you could do variation. I love to like slam my hands on oh, the table yeah. and be like, come know. on, I literally, yeah. I hate it. It's yeah. ugly and I hate it, get out of my house. Like, <laughs> It I just, was... it's social, there's, there's a, there's an interaction, the interactivity to this game yeah. that I just really, really love. It, it's so cooperative, but you yeah. can't quarterback, like it's not possible. That's my, my, my big pet peeve with a lot of co-op games is quarterbacking. But because of that yeah. communication barrier, yeah. you literally can't do that. And you just yeah. have to stare into the other person's eyes and be like, really hate what you just did I, really... I, I will i will admit i was i was picturing for like 50 percent of when you were describing this because you said i play this with my partner and i love being passive aggressive i pictured your hidden goals at the end are just turned <laughs> over like you didn't unload the dishwasher it's like, that's not even <laughs> the game. it's like you you wronged me two months ago in front of my mother i'm like oh, what this is just no that's fog of love you're oh, mixing yeah, yeah. Love. There go. yeah yeah nice <laughs> you know i'm the same way uh ray i I'm not the biggest deduction fan and not the mm -hmm. uh, cooperative game are they're okay but this one uh just the way they set it up that i think it's that 
uh, that communication barrier, right? I think that's what really drives this game. And having, yeah. I, I just, it cracks me up the whole passive aggressive thing. It, it's hilarious to me when you're playing it. Lovely. It's, yeah, really good choice. Okay, so let's see what Richard's got for us at number five. Richard, take it away. Okay, continuing on. And this is going to be a very interesting list to watch, Chris. I have never heard of electronic dream phone it certainly sounds like something that one should not like and i look forward to hearing more and well risk star wars yeah sure of course where is he i assume you must have you know signed away your soul to george lucas at some point because of your undying love for all things star wars doesn't matter what it is of course you're gonna love it. you have no choice you're contractually obligated surely and ray decorum Okay, I get it, because I remember in a recent episode you talked about how uh, you're really not that into co-op games. And yeah, I've heard this over and over and over again uh, from lots of different channels, from folks who tend not to like co-op games, that Decorum is the one that they love. So that's uh, a cool one, definitely. And now let's move on to number five. Here's another thing I tend to hate, folks. Direct player conflict. And while there have been games over the years that Jen and I have found ourselves enjoying, where we go head to head and try to beat each other down, almost inevitably, even if we like them, they don't tend to stay on my shelf. They tend to disappear over time. But there's one that has stood the test of time, survived through multiple callings, and I love it to pieces, even though, honestly, I should hate it. It's our number five on the list, Capo de Copy, from friend of the show, um, Dr. Steve Finn, who was on an r and what was it, about a month ago, uh, talking about filler games and he was a great guest loved having him on and um wherever you are dr finn i still got my capo to copy and i still love it to pieces and jen loves it too and she has a different reason she should hate it because it is all about prohibition era gangsters trying to settle turf wars in new york and this is a subject matter jen would normally hate and yet she loves the game because the gameplay is so good and both jen and i like i said tend to shy away from games where we're constantly butting heads and trying to tear what each other tear down what each other has built up. This is basically a what is it a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven front tug of war as we are constantly um, drafting dice to push our way in or not drafting dice, uh, rolling dice and then using them, uh, but combining them in different ways depending on what we roll to move into the different boroughs of New York and try to push the other player out. There there are mind games aplenty because sometimes we push in and we don't reveal what we're pushing in with and the, you know those to tokens go face down. Sometimes they're face up and we know what we're up against. Every one of the different areas has unique abilities associated with them. We can use our dice for you know uh, deploying influence in this you know area control combat game or we can use them for lots of other stuff too. It's a brilliant design and honestly... Honestly, I have a hard time saying why this one survived the cut when so many other great uh, in-your-face combat games that Jen and I enjoyed didn't stick with us. I'll talk about some of them in the post-show. Folks, did you know there is a post-show? Link for it down in the show notes. Go to the extended edition of this show, and we'll have a few more. I've got several more I could have talked about here. you know. Um, but Copa to Copy stands the test of time. It is so clever, so much fun. One of Steve Finn's all-time greats, and the man has a lot of really great designs. It's number five on our list, Capo de Copy, a game I love, but I really should hate. Wow, another one that I never would have expected uh, Richard to like. Now, I've heard about this game. I've not played it, but I love Steve Finn games. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Steve uh, a few months ago on the show. Uh, he does. He's like the master of the 20, 30-minute uh, filler type games. So mm -hmm. uh, this one mm -hmm. I'm curious. To, uh, I'd, I'd love to check it out. It seems like something I would have no problem uh, enjoying. Uh, but it's nice to see that Richard uh, has kept it through many cullings and many moves. Um, yeah, that, that speaks to it, right? Like, yeah. It makes yeah, it absolutely. through a purge. Yeah. I know, like, Ray, Ray can vouch for this. Ray's a big oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, if it makes it through, it earns its spot on the shelf. Yeah. It's my notoriously cutthroat purges. Yes, absolutely. Not yeah. my hoarding tendencies. <laughs> if you want to learn more about Ray's hoarding tendencies, be sure to check oh. out that pre-show, folks. Uh, <laughs> click on the link below and we talk about that. What a hook. With, with all kinds of other things. Um, speaking of... <laughs> That's what we're titling it. Ray's hoarding tendencies. <laughs> Ray's it's hoarding the new tendencies. show. Welcome to the R&R &R show. Mention. The R stands for Ray's hoarding tendencies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris, why don't we go on to our number four? on the list of right. games that we should I'm, hate but actually love. 
I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited to talk about this, but I do have a very sad update for those of you following along at home. Montana, my good friend Montana, she says, I, I think I lost it only recently when my parents sold their house. So if, if you bought a Deeply house upsetting. recently, just anywhere, and there's <laughs> it's a hot not even pink in Toronto, phone and uh, a... <laughs> but look. Look in your basement. Uh, there might be a copy of Dream Phone. That's and awesome. Montana also says that her favorite is Brad, in case you were oh. wondering. Oh. Hey, girl. <laughs> so I was trying to find a picture of Brad. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, maybe I can find one when Rado's next game happens, because it gives me an excuse not to listen to him. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, no, Brad. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to talk about my my uh, my number one. This is this this game came about. I genuinely enjoy this game. It's so stupid. You shouldn't own it, but you should. Um, it 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 was at my friend my friend Dave's cottage. Um, he had this game that was like a little like Hasbro style game. It was incredible, and I put it as my number one cottage game. It's like the number one cottage game that you want to play. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful game called Bounce Off, and it has Bounce Off invaded my life ever since. The glory of bounce off. Matt and Dave were so mad I put it as the number one party game, but it doesn't matter. You bounce the balls, you sink the shots, you get the win, uh, and you have to bounce the balls into the thing to make a pattern. Uh, you can see this awesome commercial that's happening right now as they bounce those. Oh, she missed. Oh, yes, he got it. He got. Oh, look at look at this. Look at look at how intense this is. Right? Look at how it look. Look at the celebration that was just happened when they created. Look at the high fives, the happiness, the joy, the family coming together. There's nothing that's better than bounce off in this world. Not even the Timu fake game <laughs> bounce. <laughs> No, there's a, there's a game bounce forgery boo. out there, and I no. need to take this opp- I need to take this opportunity to chastise Timu um, because of this this grave, grave forgery of game bounce. I mean, I had to I had to see it for myself. And yes, there are <laughs> ping pong balls, and yes, there's a little grid that you can bounce them in, and yes, there are cards that l- might as well be paper. Uh, they got the quality <laughs> correct in both <laughs> versions of the thinnest cards imaginable and no way to hold them in the box. And and the box be, oh, being just wide enough so that the cards will fly out through the slit <laughs> in the opening and you eventually will lose all of them. But it doesn't matter because, <laughs> because bounce off is a way of life. Okay? Bounce off <laughs> Is is the joy of beer pong without the drinking? Bounce off is you, you just lost just me. just bouncing. Just, you just bounce a little ping pong ball into it. It's a it's a carnival game in your home. Like you you never have to go to the carnival again if you have this in your life. You just need a long table or a short table or a floor. You could play bounce off anywhere. You could play it on carpets. You could play it on walls. You could play it outside. The possibilities are endless. And when you get a game this versatile uh, that brings such life and joy to the scene, it can't not be included in everything. It's a perfect solo game. It's a perfect co-op game. Oh it's a God, perfect the... non-co-op game. That would have been a what, great April Fool's you want. video is how to play Bounce Off solo, and it's just you. Oh. <laughs> Sadly <laughs> playing a game. That wouldn't be an April Fool's video. It would be of a real not, video. It would be a valuable, <laughs> valuable content for the for the masses to enjoy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's, I want to hear us rise up in the comments for Bounce Off. Yeah. Praise our Lord and Savior Bounce Off. It doesn't matter <laughs> what nonsense you are going to be speaking about for our next three. We know the list ends here. Thank you, everybody, for watching the R&R show. Um, <laughs> I'm your host with George with these three yahoos. It doesn't matter what they're going to say. Turn off your television or go to the extended edition where we'll have extra ones. Maybe we'll give you a sneak peek of that extended edition right now of the ones that didn't make the cut. But this is our number one game collectively. Bounce Off. Oh my Amazing. gosh. I I remember seeing this back in the day, Chris, and I always wanted to copy, but I don't know. It's fantastic. It's it looks hilarious. And like you said, it's a carnival game at home. That's it's all it is. And it's silly yeah. and it's fun. It looks fun and hilarious. And... God, I want that kid's haircut. That's like that teenage boy. <laughs> I mean Dang. just everything game... about this sings. That, you know? me, of cool. that gives me greater joy. I mean, Dreamphone really comes close, but but Bounce Off just edged it out, and that's that's tough. 
Yeah, that is tough yeah. because Dream Foam brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> yeah. Even more joy than Brad brings Montana. <laughs> oh, Brad. Nice. I don't know how the heck we're going to follow this up. This is a fantastic, Chris. Bounce yeah, off at our number four. Games That's that we uh, thought we'd hate, but we actually love. But I'm going to try my best uh, with our number three, our collection of number three. This is the game that has... It's the only one in my collection that plays as long as it does, as epic as it does... It's a game that I never thought I would enjoy as much as I do. And it actually turned out to be my favorite game of all time. Yes, we're following Bounce Off with Twilight Imperium, folks. Uh, nice, this game, nice. absolutely brilliant. And, you know, when I, I always wanted to try it just because I've heard all the stories. Of, you got to take all day to play it. Um, it's a race to 10 points. Only 10 points. It's like a filler game, right? 10 victory points. But... There's so much to this game, and it's just completely epic. It's a 4X game. You start in one corner of the galaxy, and you hope to go throughout and expand your fleet and uh, punch people in the face and win the game uh, after many, many hours. Um, what else can I say about it? All, uh, one thing I will say is uh, this video, uh, check out Shay's video, Shay Parker's video, folks, because he's got the ultimate way to learn the game. He does it in such a great way. It's only it's only about a 35-minute teach to Shay, but anytime I play this game, if there's a new player, I direct them that video because Shay does the best job of explaining the game. Um, I'm not going to explain it here because it'll take up another hour or so, but um, it's a Forex game. You're building your fleet. You go out, explore. You're going to exploit, get more resources, and complete missions. Uh, there are secret missions. There are public missions. You all just go out and try to do your thing and hopefully come out on top after you've taken your nap break, your lunch break, your dinner break, and all the different <laughs> breaks. And um, at the end of it, it's to me, it's such a rewarding experience. And I never would have thought that I'd like this game because most of the games I like to play tend to be light to medium weight. They tend to be 60 to 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. This one, I've, I've literally played this game. The longest game I played, I think, was just under 12 hours of Twilight Imperium. And, oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's, that's my, my, my that's yeah. totally my reaction, Ray. I would never think that... And I was captivated the entire time. Every single game I played Twilight Imperium has stories upon stories upon stories. And anytime I've played the game, or I talk about the game with anyone that I've played with before, we always talk about those big moments. And those are the type of things. Whether you're playing a you know game like Bounce Off, which has stories built into it, obviously, or a game like obviously. Twilight Imperium, you know, uh, you have stories for days. And that's why it's our collective number three, Twilight Imperium. Uh, I thank you for honoring Bounce Off in that, I had to. In that breakdown, Raul. I'm glad you could see the epic <laughs> nature. Um, I, I know there's so many people who love Twilight Imperium. Uh, Twilight Imperium, I think, is the reverse of this list for me. Games that I thought I should love Ooh. and then didn't. Oh, uh, it, interesting. It, 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 is, it, it checks, like, follow mechanic. That's one of my yep. favorite mechanics. Yep. It, like, it's so good. There, there's so many things about it that I was so excited, and it just never hit with me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm I'm thrilled that it hits with so many people. For me, I prefer Dune or Galactic yeah. Era. Um, both yeah. of those I like for my 4x sort of scratching of the itch. Yeah, to give yeah. them their shoutouts. That, that's that's totally fair too. You know, um, it's definitely not. Uh, it's not for everyone. But I if uh, I, I always say for uh, folks who are into the hobby, I give it a shot. You know, I, I think it's one of yeah. those games you should at least give it a shot and see. Uh, you never know, because for me, I gave it a shot, and I end up loving it, and um, yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, speaking of games that we thought we'd hate, but actually love, Ray, you've got the number two on the list. All right, so continuing my my trend of, of normcore picks that everyone's going to be like, why, why wouldn't you like this? Uh, it's because uh, <laughs> I owed no other game like this game. Uh, so my, my number two is Root, nice. and it is the only war game area control game anything even adjacent to those mechanics just never have never appealed to me and that is largely due to the theming of those games just have no appeal for me i typically don't like games where you can dogpile someone and i just area control again this is the only game in my collection that involves those mechanics and largely because of the art i know that's like a very um uh, you know tired like reason why I know everyone like I feel like people say that a lot like the arts what got them into it but for me truly that is what drew me into this game and I'm very grateful for that because now I have a war game and an area control game that I actually really really enjoy in my collection and if it did not have this classic leader game art and these adorable little wooden creature woodland creatures I would not have picked it up I just wouldn't have I like it took this game for me to get over the hump 
of understanding what kind of war games I can actually like enjoy and they actually click with me. Um, if you've never heard of Root before, I'll just give the quick explanation. This is a very famous game in the hobby, so I won't I won't belabor it too much. But despite its colorful and cutesy appearances, it is pretty much at its heart a war game. You are going to be taking on in the base game, you're going to be taking on one of four little woodland factions, and you're going to be uh, drawing cards, moving your troops around on a board, and fighting each other for dominance of the forest. And what I really enjoy about this is... It's asymmetric, and that's the other reason why you would think it doesn't work for me, because I have a really hard time getting asymmetry to the table with my gaming group. I tend to play with newer gamers, and I am the designated teacher in my group, and having to sit there and teach everyone four separate rule sets, people just don't want to do that. But what I love about Root is that the base mechanics are all the same, and I also love that even though you're doing different things with your asymmetry, for the most part, you're using the same... Um, components. So yes, like the Marquis de Cat get their little like wood tokens and whatever, but like those core cards are the same for everyone. You're just doing something different with them. It's not like everyone has their own unique deck where I have to go through and explain everyone's individual deck. The cards are the same. The suits just do different things. Like when you have the Eerie, you're creating this, those are the bird people. You're creating almost this like programming engine where every time you do the same actions over and over again until you effectively explode. And if you're playing the Woodland Alliance, you're taking those cards and turning them into, into like guerrilla recruits for your, your uprising. So the basics are actually, it feels less daunting to bring this to the table than other big asymmetric games. And it's a little bit of a trick because I'm like, oh, that's not that bad. And then I bring it to the table. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of a, this is kind of a dog to teach to people who are newer to the hobby. Yeah. But I love the art. I like that as asymmetric like war games like this go, it is a relatively easy teach. It hits like a board gaming part of my brain that I never expected a war game to hit. I remember like going to cons and walking by like the miniatures and the war gaming tables and being like, nothing about that appeals to me. I, don't, I like, I don't know what's going on here. It's not for me. And this was my bridge, my gateway game, which it was for a lot of people um, as well. And so yeah, that's why that's why I love this game. I, I, yeah. I've played so, so much Root. And if you explain the mechanics to me in a void, I pro like would be shocked at how much I played this game. Yeah, it, it is a, a brilliant choice, Ray. I was the same yeah. way. Like I was, you know, you see uh, <clears throat> like typical war games, right? There's a map, there's a bunch of uh, chits and hexes and it's like, OK, whatever. But the yeah. brilliant, uh, the brilliance of um, leader games coming out, and like, hey, let's put some really yeah. cute art and uh, keep the gameplay. And it's, it really, it really does. It's a, a gateway for those of us in the hobby into a different mm -hmm. genre, right? Uh, yeah, a little, totally. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and I and I love that for that. And I'm, I haven't played Root as much as I want to. It's one of those games. I just, I know it's almost like a lifestyle game, right? I and mean, there's so many people yeah. so die hard into it with all the different factions. Yeah. Um, it's something I, I would love to dive into a little bit more. Um, um, yeah, I will say it. if you're looking to just get more reps of this game, the the Steam version or the Switch version of this game is actually pretty. It's actually pretty solid. It's a really nice, nice implementation of it. Yeah, yeah that's this on... is one of my fr friends' p favorite games, and they always say like, "Hey, you want to play Root with us? Great. Here's the Steam version. Go learn the factions." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it's a really great <laughs> learning tool tutorial. to just play yeah. the tutorial yeah. Yeah. Um, on the Steam version. Is really good. Yeah. Nice. Okay, uh, so that's it, except for Richard. He's got our number one. Richard, take it away. Okay, Chris, what is this bounce-off thing? Uh, I only first heard of it when it was in your uh, recent Top 30 Deathmatch, which, by the way, folks, if you have not watched it, after you're done with this week's r, &R might I suggest heading over to Room and Board Review and uh, getting comfortable and watching Chris's excellent Top 30 Deathmatch that he put up last week. I loved it so much, I mentioned it in the recap the other day. And spoiler alert... Whatever the heck Bounce Off is, it defeated um, Attack on Titan, the deck building game. And Chris, I felt that pain too, because Attack on Titan is a criminally overlooked game. I mean, heck, have we done a uh, overlooked games thing? If not, it should totally be on the list. Such a great little deck builder, wonderful co-op game. I love it to pieces. And Chris, oh my gosh, that deathmatch, can I just say, was phenomenal. It's so worth making it to the end with all the weird little hints throughout. And then you get to your number one, and I felt like I was watching a Christopher Nolan film, quite frankly. It was so awesome. Awesome. But anyway, folks, uh, we're here to do R&R &R stuff, not room and board stuff today, uh, but I highly recommend it. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, and then Ruel, uh, Twilight Imperium. Yeah, yeah, that 
Th that, I think, is the epitome of this list. Um, nobody should like that game. And uh, and I know you and Shay and so many people love it uh, to pieces. Someday I'll play it with you, well, someday. And maybe I'll understand. Because I from standing from the outside, I, I don't understand. And Ray, Root, yeah, that one makes perfect sense, too. I was very impressed by the game. Still hated it, though, when I actually had a chance to play it. But yeah, really impressive title. Again, another epitome of what this uh, list could be all about. Something normally you couldn't stand, and yet somehow this one breaks the rules. And that's certainly true for our combined number one, folks. For the longest time, this game was in my personal top ten of all time. It has fallen over time, maybe in part because I really should hate it. And yet I still love it. Uh, it is number one on our list Marvel Champions. And here I am playing it with my wife, Jen. Uh, and we also then played, uh, uh, um, you know, Arkham Horror, or, you know, Arkham Final Horror, Final Hour, regardless. Uh, it was a run-through I did a couple of years ago with Jen. Uh, I've played this a bunch of times on the channel, both as public videos and exclusive behind-the-scenes videos for Patreon backers. I love the game so much. Uh, up until last year, when they started rolling out the X-Men stuff, I was all in, getting every single expansion that came out and loving it to pieces. Um, but honestly, I should hate this game. I mean, not because it's a co-op game, not because it's a superhero game. These are all things I really love. But because, um, in spite of how brilliant the core card play is... And the incredible thematic implementation of uh, these superheroes that I love, because Make Mine Marvel, I've always been a Marvel Comics fan ever since I was a kid growing up in the 70s, and um, you know, buying them on the little turnstiles down at the local 7-Eleven. Um, I, I hate this game, or I should hate this game, because a sizable portion of it features effectively roll to resolve. And what I mean by that is games where you make a lot of plans. You figure out everything it is you want to do. You set them in motion, spend your resources, hope for the best, and then usually you have to roll some dice and the dice tell you whether you succeed or fail. It's a little bit different here because instead, uh, when the bad guys are going to attack, who are we fighting here? We're fighting Rhino in this one. It's me as She-Hulk and Janice Captain Marvel up against Rhino. After we declare who's going to defend, what special powers we're going to use, because we know Rhino Rhino is going to come at us, and he's going to hit us hard, and we set up all our defenses. Then we draw cards blind and find out that, yeah, all of our plans were garbage. They were completely undone by this one thing that we couldn't anticipate. Or maybe they worked out very, very well, and um, we over-delivered. Or maybe we just wasted our time and um, valuable resources on something we didn't need to spend. I hate roll to resolve or variations of it. In this case, it's draw to resolve, but random to resolve with a passion. It has ruined so many otherwise wonderful games for me over the years. And yet, I kept coming back to Marvel Champions, even though, for uh, for the record, Marvel Champions would be 10 times better if you got to draw the enemy effects and then decided how you wanted to respond to them, rather than make all your decisions, then draw, and realize, oh, well, this is garbage. Uh, there's no way I could have anticipated that's the one thing that was going to happen. Hate that normally. Hate it here, quite frankly. Wish it was different, and yet still love it. Why? I already said it right up front, folks. Make mine Marvel. Uh, the, I, if this had been based on the DC characters, or Wildstorm characters, or Invincible characters, or pretty much anything other than Marvel, I don't think I would have played this game more than a time or two. Thought, oh yeah, here's another game that's uh, really, really good, ruined by... The, maybe the worst mechanism in all of board gaming, worse than Roll to Move, is Roll to Resolve. And yet, I love it because of its incredible attention to detail, its amazing thematic verisimilitude for um, one of my favorite things in all of pop culture. I mean, I love me Marvel Comics. I love Star Trek. Uh, there's a few things. I love Game of Thrones. There's a few big properties that I love with all my heart and soul, and Marvel is probably at the top, which uh, means in spite of myself, and in spite of it, I must love Marvel Champions. And that's number one on the folks. Remember I said, head over to the extended edition, folks. I've got some more to talk about in the post show. Yeah, Marvel Champions, uh, a terrific game. Uh, one that 
I, I'm like Richard. I would have, I, if it was any other property, I'd probably look at it. I was like, oh, okay, uh, I'll get, whatever. But because it was Marvel, gave a shot, and I did enjoy it. Uh, he, his love of Marvel is like my love of Star Wars. Like you put that property on there, I'm definitely gonna, you know, check it out. And you know, um, if you're around me, beware. I may spoil the ending for our 40 year old movie. But uh, <laughs> great choice, Richard, for our number one. Any final thoughts, uh, Chris and or Ray, before we get going here? I, I think that's a really solid pick. I've never played Marvel Champions. Mm-hmm. I think I also would hate it and i also think i would love it yep. like because i know i know it's like so highly regarded so like it 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 really hits home for me for me i just i hate lcgs and i and yep. i can't go down the yeah. lcg road i just i just can't do it um ccgs are even worse but like for lcgs i'm just like i i, I just stay away yeah uh, but i i totally ha- have heard from a lot of people that like Marvel Champion. Well, it's it's like number thirty six or like forty three on Board Game Geek's yeah. top ranking right yeah, now. It's up there, yeah, um, which is wild for a, a licensed yeah. game. Like that. That's yeah. that yeah. in of itself says something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I I feel like it's actually a really a really nice fitting fitting pick, and I'd give that like a nine point seven five. <laughs> Perfect. Love everything about it. Nine. Nine. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, that's going to do you it for this sub- reference. You got to watch the pre-show. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Be sure. We're going to record the end of the uh, show now, the post show. Uh, but folks, thank you again for joining us here on the R&R show. I um, want to thank our sponsor, Mayday Games. And until next time, we'll see you later. So long. Bye-bye.